Hello, I am Dr. Zenya Wirth, and in this video, we will be discussing polynomials. We will talk about polynomial functions and how to solve polynomial functions using both the quadratic equation and factor. First, a little review of polynomial functions. A polynomial function is defined as one that has one or more variables raised to a power that is a non-negative integer, which includes zero. The degree of the polynomial is the highest power of the variables in the function. Some common types of polynomial functions are seen here. They include a constant order, y is equal to a, which is a constant. This is also x to the power of zero. A first order linear polynomial, y is equal to ax plus b. Second order, which we call quadratic, where the highest power is x squared. And third order, where the highest power is x cubed. They also extend past this fourth order, fifth order, et cetera, et cetera. These are some common types that we see frequently. Here are some graphs of those polynomial functions we just discussed. A constant function, y is equal to a, is merely a horizontal line that intersects the y-axis at a value of a. A linear function is a straight line that has the form y is equal to ax plus b with a slope intercept or y-intercept of b. A quadratic function is a parabola. It can be an upward-facing parabola like this, using my laser pointer here, like this. If a is positive, it will be a downward facing parabola like a rainbow if A is negative, and C is where the function intersects the Y axis. A third order polynomial function crosses the X axis at three points here and has this general shape where the Y intercept is D. A linear polynomial function is a straight line in the form Y is equal to MX plus B. If you know the slope M in the Y intercept B, Given a value for y, you can easily determine a value for x. If you have a system of linear equations, they can be solved algebraically using substitution or elimination. A quadratic polynomial function can also be solved algebraically using the quadratic formula, and also by graphing or factoring. And anything higher than a quadratic polynomial can be solved by factoring sometimes and by graphing, but they do get more challenging to solve the higher the order of the polynomial. Let's review the quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic function, x squared, using the quadratic equation, first you must make sure that the function is in the standard form, where a standard form has zero or nothing on one side of the equation and all the terms on the other side of the equation. Once this is true, you can assign values for a, b, and c, which are your three constants, and then solve for your root x using this formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, this entire expression over 2a. We can use the determinant of this function to predict if the roots of x or the solutions for x are real or imaginary numbers. The determinant is b squared minus 4ac. That's what we call the determinant. If this value is positive or greater than zero, there are going to be two real solutions to x. If it equals zero, there is only one real solution. And if it is less than zero, there are two imaginary or complex solutions. So an imaginary number, remember, is when you have a, a square root of a negative number in here. So if this is negative, this becomes a square root of a negative number. And that means you will have two complex solutions as your roots. Let's do an example to illustrate the quadratic function. First, let's start with our initial equation, 5x squared plus 6x equals negative 1. We need to first put this equation in standard form before we can solve it. We need a zero on the right-hand side here. So we're gonna move negative one over to the left-hand side to get five x squared plus six x plus one is equal to zero. We then assign our constants, a is equal to five, it's in front of the x squared, b is equal to six because it's in front of x, and c is equal to one because it's the constant by itself. We determine the, we compute the determinant here and we get 16. And since our determinant is greater than zero, we should have two real numbers as solutions. We plug our values for a, b, and c into our quadratic formula here. And we find that the solutions for x or the roots of this equation that would make this expression equal to zero are x is equal to negative two, negative 0.2, and x is equal to negative one. It's important to note that even though these numbers are negative and one number is a fraction, so it is not an integer, it does not mean that these are not real numbers. These are definitely real numbers. It just means that these are real negative numbers and this is a real number that is not an integer. So keep distinct the definition for a real number versus an integer versus a positive number. 
We can also determine the solution for polynomial equations using factoring. By factoring, what we're doing is we're taking a higher order polynomial and we're separating it into smaller linear equations that we can then set equal to zero and solve for the roots. So every higher, most higher order polynomials can be factored into a series of lower order linear equations that multiplied together will form the higher order polynomial. Factoring can be challenging because it takes a little bit of intuition to determine exactly what those factors are that when multiplied together will form your initial or original polynomial function. In general, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, a polynomial will have a number of real roots that is less than or equal to the order of the polynomial. So it won't have more real roots than the polynomial. Unfortunately, not all polynomials can be solved by factoring. Let's do our previous example again, except this time we're gonna use factoring to solve. 5x squared plus one is equal to negative six x. First, we have to set the equation standard form, just like before. We want zero on one side and all of our terms on the other. So we moved negative six x over to the left. The two factors of this equation are x plus one and five x plus one. If I multiply these two expressions together by using by multiplying the x with each term and multiplying the one with each term, then I see that we will arrive at 5x squared plus 6x plus 1. If I set each of these linear equations equal to 0, I can find the roots of this polynomial. x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to negative 1 is a solution to this equation. 5x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is, is equal to negative 1 over 5, or negative 0 0.2 is also a solution to this equation. Let's try a slightly harder example. In this case, I have a slightly larger expression here with a higher order polynomial. This is x cubed now. The first thing I want to do is see if I have any greatest common factors, usually abbreviated as GCF. Do I have anything in this equation where that I can simplify or factor out where everything in this equation is a multiple of that factor? There are two things actually. The first thing I notice is that all of these numbers, all of these constants are even which means all of them can be divided by two. So two is the greatest common factor for this equation. I can, I can remove or factor out a two of every single um, part of this equation. The other one that I see is actually x. I have an x cubed, an x squared, and an x. So I can factor a value of x out of every one of these terms on this equation. So my greatest common factor for this equation is actually two x. Once I factor out a 2x, I'm left with 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. This is reduced to its final form and now it needs to be factored. Five times three is equal to 15. 15 times one is also equal to 15. But if I realize that five times three is equal to 15 and also that five times two is equal to 10 and 10 minus three is equal to seven, I realize that the combination of factors x minus five and two x plus three gives me two x squared minus seven x minus 15. So it does help to sit down and write what are the multiplicants here of these numbers, see what's adds and subtracts and see what your ideal factors would be. A little bit of trial and error and you can arrive at the best factor or the only factor for this equation is two x times x minus five times two x plus three is equal to zero. After factoring and setting these terms equal to zero, the roots of this equation are x is equal to zero because two x is equal to zero, x is equal to negative three over two because two x plus three is equal to zero, and x minus five is equal to zero means that x is equal to five. And these are the three solutions to this equation. When factoring, here are some things to look for that will kind of help you get started. Look for any difference of squares because that has an immediate factor here. Look for a difference of cubes, which has this factor in. And the sum of cubes here is always going to be factored like this. Look for any greatest common factor that can be factored out initially to simplify the expression. And look for terms that can be grouped and factored individually. If you have four different terms and two of them have a greatest common factor and another two have another common factor, you can separate those out and factor them. Lastly, you can also solve polynomial functions by graphing the function and finding where the function crosses the x-axis. This only works, of course, if the function is going to cross the x-axis, but if it does, it is a nice visual way of determining what are the solutions for x.
I encourage you to practice this by finding the roots of the following polynomial functions using either factoring or the quadratic method. Remember that the quadratic method can only be used if you have a quadratic formula with an x squared. So these ones you need to solve either by factoring and then applying the quadratic method or completely factoring into linear equations that are multiplied together. Please make sure all of these are in standard form before you factor them. And good luck. I hope you will find this video useful for your class.